So I've got another Nimrod deck, and I think this one's really, really fun because it plays to the spirit of Nimrod, which is really trying to get as many copies as you can using various and multiple destroy effects. So as is the case, typically, we're gonna buff Nimrod up here with Shuri or some other buff cards. Uh, plop it down on turn five, and then on turn six, do our best to create multiple copies and destroy procs. So Arnim Sola can be really good for that, as can Venom to lock in some of those buffed stats and then play it in combination with a Carnage or a death lock in a different location to create multiple cycles of Nimrod copies. Hopefully swarming the board with all these big Nimrods, overwhelming your opponent, and perhaps most importantly, surprising them by redistributing stats in interesting ways with multiple procs or double procs, which is really when this deck finds its strength and finds its wins. Now, in regards to wins, I have to say this deck did struggle a little bit with consistency. I like to try out various builds to see how uh, these season pass cards will perform. I don't think this is going to end up being a shell that looks especially great for Nimrod. It just felt okay at best. In particular, you've got some curve concerns here, and if you don't hit the Nimrod or if it doesn't get buffed into a substantial state, it's really hard to make this deck feel powerful. So in many ways, his fate feels tied to Shuri on turn four. Feels like when you get a turn four Shuri into Nimrod, you're feeling good. Otherwise, this deck feels like it it has some struggles, and it's definitely a little unfortunate that Nimrod's fate feels so closely uh, intertwined with Shuri here, who is a Series 4 card, which I know is a little bit prohibitive. That said, this deck only has one Series 4 card, and I know a lot of people have invested in Shuri, so hopefully still a little bit more accessible than something like a Galactus deck, for instance. So all that said, I'm not sure I would really recommend this deck for a climb. It's going to need some refinement and work to fine tune it, I think, to feel great. But it was still a great exercise in some fun Nimrod shenanigans and definitely finding some of the limits and possibilities for this card. You're also going to see some fantastic highlights in this video, particularly around Dr. Octopus, which is supposed to be here as a backup turn five play where, you know, you double these stats with Shuri, you dump your opponent's power in the Doc Ock lane, and then hopefully you, you know, you Artem Zola those Doc Ocks into other lanes, creating a real deficit there between your opponent's dumped cards and your power elsewhere. Uh, in reality, as you're about to see, Dr. Octopus does not always work as planned. There are going to be some great moments in this one <laughs> if you watch through this video. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, Mr. Nimrod. I think we leave him alone, potentially, in that case, for the Zola. We don't have a lot. I mean, Lizard's, like, good there, but kind of risky. You don't really want to... I guess if we had a Venom, we could Lizard there safely. Ooh. Okay. 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 Doc Ock also kind of interesting here too sometimes because you can, theirs don't get the benefit right. I think we played Matt earlier. I think they were that Destroyer. They might have been that Destroyer deck with the, the Nimrod, right? We want to hit Shuri here. I'll skip a turn and everything. I don't care. We've got Sunspots. So skipping a turn's okay. Shuri me, baby. Shuri me, baby. Deathlock's, well, at least he's big, right? That's cool. Oh, Mr. Negative, I take it back. Dang, I, the portrait should have told us that, right? Zabu off the negative. Wow, you're a god, dude. We're missing Shuri, so Nimrod's only going to be 10 here. That's pretty iffy, man. I don't love that. Uh, I mean, we can hit Shuri here, so it's... Eh. Do I ever play the Carnage here just because... It gives me an extra roll on the Shuri. Carnage would eat whatever comes out of this, so losing a buff on it doesn't matter, right? It gives me two rolls on it gives me two rolls on, on Shuri. And then that makes the Nimrod insane. Although if we lose the Carnage, we don't really have a Nimrod activator is the problem. <laughs> currently anyway uh i think this is safer because we can still maybe do i don't know we still have a chance to hit shuri of course i'm a i'm a god it's easy when you're just really good <laughs> uh now we need another destroyer though we need venom or zola right oh there's the venom okay well, I mean, this is looking pretty good. It's hard to beat negative decks, though, so one Iron Man changes their whole world. So I don't want to... 
I don't want to sign us up for this too much yet, but looking okay. I am yeah, Iron Man Iron at Man. 10, dude. <laughs> the good news is we're not actually really invested in, in Shuri's lab too much. I mean, I, I guess a little bit though, Iron huh? Because we... Um, yeah, in fact, are we ever better off here just playing the venom well actually does venom go to 46 i mean it's still not enough though is it it's still not enough um so we could actually carnage here and then like venom here or i guess actually we'd want a venom here because i want the power going here don't i so that puts 20 here. Venom eats that. It's We've got 20 23, 30 here, and then another 40 here. I think that's right, right? Oh yeah, Venom writes bad with Quantum Tunnel. Yeah, 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 that's, a, that's another reason, but I think this is okay. They put so much power here. I think we're actually fine. I think we might have this. I don't know. How big can they really get mid? That's not big enough. They they overcommitted left. I think. We lose a little of the sewer system, but still plenty large. Venom even a little extra buffed. Okay. Cool, dude. Really cool. Good win. That was a tough one. Really surprised they double stacked this. It felt so sufficiently big. Although I will say if they hadn't, I think we could have outpaced it. I don't know if the Venom doubles or not is the thing. Um, I don't know if he doubles based on the, po it does say after. I think he does, right? I think he would have gone to like, what did we say 46 or something? So if they hadn't had the Mystique here, right? They, they would actually be at 50 and then another 14 under. Yeah, I guess, I guess we would have. I think if they hadn't done this, we would have won left. So I'm not sure they had it. This is just crazy power output. Shuri into Shuri's lab was was a high roll for real. Okay, this is a good start. Yeah, actually hitting the Nimrod with both Nakia and Shuri is insane. This this is probably oh my god! I was gonna say this is snap worthy, but I'm not snapping because I want to play this out and. Um, this is the absolute perfect hand. It, it couldn't get any better than this. We're gonna have an 18, no, no, a 36 power Nimrod. Oh, I hope the opponent doesn't concede, man. I wanna see this play out. I really wanna see it play out so hard. <laughs> this could not be better. Oh, man. I almost wish they would snap so that they're like more invested and, you know, can't, can't hop out of here, but. Uh, all right. Shuri, um, I guess we play the, oh, that's fine. I guess we play the Nimrod left to play around Arrow, right? So, cause we want the Arnim Zola going here anyway. Right. And I think that's, I think we do the, 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 the I think for that exact same reason, we play the Zola instead of the Venom Deathlock. Right. That's totally fine too. We're going to be playing there anyway, so all good. I mean, this has to be an arrow on, on six, right? I mean, we're revealing first anyway, so I guess arrow doesn't really matter, but... Just save for this way Venom doesn't get eaten or whatever. This could be beautiful, dude. <laughs> this could be beautiful, dude. No! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Trust KK Sparkles. No. Let's just all pretend because I want to put this in the video, right? So let's just map this out. I, I could, uh, you know, I could Photoshop it here. So this eats the Nimrod, right? Zola puts a 36 power Nimrod here, a 36 power Nimrod here. And then the Nimrod himself says, hey, man, I got destroyed. So he puts 
a 36 power Nimrod here and a 36 power Nimrod here. So we have 72 power here and we have 76 power here and we have negative one power here. She's a streamer? Oh, KK Sparkles, no. Yeah, Photoshop it, yeah. <laughs> That is the perfect example of this deck, though. You just have to imagine a little bit. But you can see it, it, see it in action, man. Crazy Comertage upside. That's wild. Uh, all right. Uh, Nexus is a little bit weird for us. Theoretically, a Shuri Dock Ock could be cool, but we, <laughs> we've seen that backfire. Um, I might want to just storm it out, in which case we might want to Lizard it. Sometimes it is nice to have spots for two Nimrods, though, later. Might want to go for the double rod. Nah, let's put Lizard mid for now. Let's see. Armor. Okay. That's not going to be an action lane for Nimrod, so that's a good storm spot, maybe. Okay. Could do storm next turn if I want to do Nakia now. Doesn't really change anything, right? We're still playing Nimrod on five here and then hoping to hit. Well, this changes a lot, actually. We kind of need Zola or Carnage and Venom. But either way, this is still probably the move. Zola would be good. Oh, yeah, there we go. See, we haven't really had a Zola game yet, man. Finally, a Zola game. So this means we're contesting mid and left. I think the concern is if they do add a lot of power mid, we might have trouble because they're just getting an extra buff, right? If they have like four units there, oh, that's Wind even more trouble. My oh hand. my God, bro. Okay, this might actually save us, man. Just pull all their power here and then dump out of it and try to win these. I like it. I like it. Okay, they didn't play for Stark Tower either. Is this a Galactus by any chance? No way, right? Moon Girl on a two card hand. Hulk, Titania, and Cosmo. Okay. Dude, the, ti Dude go. the Titania absolutely wrecks me because I can't Zola. I guess, do I need to, though, is another question. Like, why do I Zola? But it also means they can play a card here. Oh, Cosmo, yeah, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, 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 it doesn't even matter. Uh, so they have they have four cards in hand, but or no. Oh, we copied one card off the Moon Girl, I guess. That, that two we saw was already copied. And then one new card. This theoretically wins outside of a Doctor Doom scenario. If I hit Lizard here, that would be nuts, but it feels weird. This is the most raw power I can add, but it loses to like a Doctor Doom. I don't know, man. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they didn't have it. Okay. That was a Victory. weird game. Once again, by the way, <laughs> Doc Ock screwed us every time. I mean, it was nice that we had him as a backup plan, to be fair. Like, we, you know, otherwise we were totally, totally screwed. So it was cool to have a, a, a pivot there since the Nimrod got cost increased, but still just utter garbage. Uh, okay, that's fine. Eternity range. Lizard will we'll win this with Sunspot Lizard. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Spider-Man me? Spider-Man me? Uh, dude, Doc Hawk would actually be pretty cool. <laughs> Just rip their entire hand. <laughs> I would like that. That'd be fun. Uh, I don't have the Sunspot variant. Was this like a bundle or something? Space stone, they, they can move out. That's good. Oh man, dude, dude, we, we, dude guys, we gotta cut Doc Hawk. Man, he sucks. Oh my god, dude. 
Why is it every single .cock that I've ever played gets answered by Valkyrie or Shang-Chi? It's every single time. It's actually every single time. I'm losing it. Every single one. Now, the good news is, right, like, we can just sack this lane and try to win elsewhere, but that's easier said than done, really. Easier said than done. Surprised they, uh, oh, I guess Valkyrie's fine to move out. They're all the same, right? Yeah. If I go for like a Shuri Nemrod, Shuri. Shuri goes probably in that case mid and Nimrod goes left. And then I Venom left. I mean, you should not really play into this snap. It, you should you should retreat because this game is against us. But oh, can I actually hit the curve, dude? The dream curve. If Big House wasn't Big House, we could go here and and play for the Zola. But it's not really that good because of board space, rock, and all this garbage here. But if we actually hit a Carnage or Deathlock, it's a fifty fifty here to hit a pretty good follow-up i don't know if it's still good enough though is the thing um is it good enough uh we didn't hit it anyway big house really screwed me here man we'd have a lot more options with with big house uh why are they what I guess they had a small hand, but it's not that small. I mean, they as they play it, they lose dinosaur, yes, but they're up in three spots. How do you retreat when you're ahead in three locations? Yeah, maybe the, all four cards couldn't go here, and then I don't know, though, man. You have such a lead. I would love to know what that hand is. uh okay oh <laughs> what <laughs> that is quite a sokovia my build around card and their uh their weight condition gone okay um i mean shuri like doc Ock, like we said still it's still a weight condition here i think for us so we'll play it out we've got shuri lines outside of that we don't have a lot but if their whole deck is built towards galactus they certainly might not have a lot either and there's our shuri which is good news i guess uh do we care about preserving an arnim zola lane actually probably yeah right so maybe we hold this death lock kind of sucks there's nowhere good to play it if i want to protect an arnim zola lane but uh i guess my only other good arnim zola target might actually be death lock as well since nimrod's gone if we don't hit the doc Ock, we might need the death lock well, let's pass Sunspot also could have been a good enough one if we hit it early, right? Like you could scale up for Arnim Zola pretty well, but We'll see Yeah, again carnage ain't it man I would love to hit a doc Ock here. I'm gonna be really sad if I have to play Deathlock. It might still be enough because 10 power mid is gonna win and you know, maybe 10 here adds enough. Oh, baby. That's the one That's the one so I, this just, it, this is, this is, this is Doc Ock's last chance to prove himself, okay? We need him to not hit Shang-Chi. We need him to not hit Valkyrie. We need him to not hit Cosmo, okay? This is his final redemption arc. He's failed us like three or four times in a row. If he doesn't work here, he will never actually work. This is, this is it. This is the last chance. I'm giving up on him after this. His redemption arc is complete. Let's see. Okay, that's a good start. A really good start. That's fine too, actually. Does add one power here, but we beat that. Okay. Seems like we might also really be disrupting their game plan too. This looks like the list we built earlier. Oh no, we didn't have Zola, I guess. That's fine. That's fine. 
That's fine! Doc Ock! You did it! Oh! Interesting. Now I have a dilemma. I don't want to move Doc Ock. I think we just move either of these, right? They top decked one card. Doc Ock doesn't beat 30, so we don't move Doc Ock. We just, just either of these hopefully wins Death's Domain, right? Null? I mean, if they have Null and Shuri and Wong and Artem Zola and Venom and Destroyer. Yeah, Taskmaster's a problem too, but I... <laughs> it's a top deck, right? I can't, I can't be expected to play around these top decks. Like, I have to give myself a little bit of leeway. <gasps> Don't hit mid. Don't hit mid! Enough said, bub. Hit lizard! Oh! Oh, God dang it! Oh, my God, dude. Oh, Lord. That was a one in three followed by a 50-50. Oh, no, that was scary, dude. Oh, God. That was a fun game though, dude. Nimrod did not matter, but a fun game. It's it's really melting my brain a little bit. It's one of those things I'm sure we'll get a little more used to, but... Okay, this is a weirdly... fine hand, I think. It's not gonna be super strong. But it's probably okay. We can, like, Okoye Storm here. Um, we're not going to get a good Nakia on a, on a Nimrod, unfortunately. But we can play the Nakia on, uh, five, or four, excuse me, Nimrod on five, and then Venom Deathlock on six. So pretty good, pretty good hands in the scheme of things. Oh, Thanos, their, their, their card quality density is often going to be fairly low. We might actually need to make this the, uh... Deathlock Nimrod lane and then Venom here. So we could Storm right, maybe. Maybe Storm X Mansion is safer if we think about it. Because it might be a way for them to, to nab some power over me. <gasps> That's useful for them. I actually want to storm that. They're gonna get um Vibranium Mines cards, which are good for them and not really all that helpful for us. Dang, that's... I hope they don't play here this turn. I hope they wait a minute. I'm not breaking anything here, right? We still go Nakia mid. Oh, actually, we have to go Nakia right. Two cards here, two cards here, this here. And then, uh... Deathlock here, Venom here. Yeah. That's fine. So Nakia right. Hopefully we get a good card here. Okay, they didn't play to mines. That's good news. So now they don't get any extra value off the mines. Hopefully we don't lose hard on the X-Mansion trade. Oh, Electro is actually really good for us, I bet. It might not be too bad, though, for them if they have high-powered cards instead of stones. Right? It, it could be decent for them, but this should be fine. Okay, let's see. Will poop. <laughs> um, poop. Poop diddy doop diddy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, F in the chat for leech. Yeah, uh, such a good game plan, man. Ruined, as always. I mean, the the Nokia hand buff here is gonna end up being pretty pretty good. I think we have. Quite a few stats. Oh, that's bad that we lose l right, though. Um, I mean, listen, this is worth a try, right? It's worth a try. They only have two cards in hand. I I'm, I'm mostly worried about them playing one really big one, like mid, and just, you know, like a Thanos or whatever is just too big. But for two cubes, we'll, we'll definitely play it out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, arrow, same difference, yeah. Pretty strong card quality for them to have, uh given the lamentus right not a bunch of garbage stones they had bleach blue marble and arrow which and the, and they hit the electro which gave them the five five line too otherwise they would have only been able to play one of these as opposed to 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 both of them so that's 
<laughs> Electro, as we said, was clutch if they hit the right side of their deck. They they nailed that Lamentus, man. We got kind of ripped off. Uh, okay, this is a great little uh, Shireen Imrod start. Yeah, this is beautiful. Super flow, okay. Do we benefit from that enough to keep it, or could we wipe it with Storm right away? Part of me thinks we, we know our curve and we kind of have everything we need right here already, so let's just wipe this in case they benefit more from it. There's no reason for us to give them a benefit when we know we're settled, right? So yeah, let's um, let's storm mid, and then Shuri can go mid too, that's fine. And then Nimrod wherever, it doesn't matter. Nimrod right. <laughs> we play Nimrod right. And we can play Carnage or Deathlock left, so that's okay. Um... So I'm going to be honest, I forgot we were ramped up and we couldn't play Shuri this turn, which it uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. We can play Shuri and Nimrod together with these. So that's OK. It's actually totally fine. If it was an Artem Zola line, we would be in trouble, of course, but it's not Artem Zola. So we're OK. This looks like Cerebro, too. Huh? Interesting. Does that mess us up at all? Shuri getting destroyed here. Also fine. Not a problem. C2, uh, those are going to potentially get another, uh, what, uh, 6, 12, that's 18. I am going to be adding um, more than 18. We're going to be adding uh, 20 power there. So we should be okay, theoretically, if this is a full Cerebro 2. They decide not to risk anything right, which makes sense because they don't know I'm playing Tiny. Also means our math here is a little bit solved out. Shouldn't expect any disruption from a Cerebro 2, should we? They snapped, though. Maybe they're going to play... I don't know. What are they going to play? What does Cerebro 2 have that snaps on a Nimrod? No Cosmo. I don't know. Oh, Venom, dude. Uh, we want Venom hitting the second Nimrod, right? Yes, we want Carnage eating. Well, no, there's not two Nimrods on the Venom. That was only when we had the Death Domain earlier. This is fine though, right? Uh, we went mid and we went right. Right has 26 power. Oh, no, 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 no. This is wrong. We want this. We want that Venom big. This is it. This doesn't need to be big. Yeah, Mystique's okay. This was the math we had. Sweet. Cool. Cool. Great win. Perfect example of the deck. Victory. Yeah, that felt good, man. This deck actually is going okay, guys. That's amazing. Dude, you always get repeat locations. I don't, I don't, I'm a conspiracy theorist on this. I don't buy that this is not a thing. I think this is a thing. Doc Ock's gone, that's fine. Replacement for Doc Ock? A lot of people are saying Black Panther. I, still, I'm honestly still not super sold on the Black Panther, but it's not a crazy idea. Little bit risky, I guess, to have these in play, but not really. Only for Zola, not for Venom Carnage. If we go for the traditional destroy stuff, it'll be okay. Tempo Carnage. I was trying to snipe Death's Domain, I bet, right? That's fine for us. We can play Nimrod on Death's Domain too. And now we have this, so we don't even have to worry about Zola. Uh, these are obviously great targets. Nimrod going to seven's cool. Deathlock as well, okay. Sure. Shuri? Oh, no Shuri. Um, 
so probably just best off with sunspot here right we want to make sure we're venoming the sunspot lane storm by the way guys again storm is feeling really awkward to me i guess we could go storm here but i lose a nimrod cycle because death's domain is so good if i go storm here i can't play the turn six venom deathlock stuff if i go storm here it's the same problem i have to put one of my eaters in death's domain which is is not good i want to be able to eat twice on the final turn and if i lock this out i can't eat twice on the final turn now that's not as a big a concern with death's domain i guess but without death's domain i mean if we uh okay that's fine wave into nimrod's cool wave on four are they playing like a galactus at all or anything oh that's fine too it doesn't matter nothing matter oh no that's not fine that's that's bad that's really bad actually that sucks okay that's fine uh yeah zola zola left here will be perfect okay thankfully since these got hit or this got hit by the Iceman, uh zola left here will be ideal yeah this might be snap worthy as well I, i'm not snapping because i want to see it happen but you should consider it <gasps> but ours are just bigger right and we should be able to make as many or more oh i'll tell you what though i guess we have a um, board size problem are we at all worried about that? We're losing a Nimrod mid due to board sizing. Is there ever a world where we just death or excuse me, venom this and and try to win the flanks? That leaves me with 14 and 12. And or 14 again. Isn't this just better? Lizard venom instead? You mean like here? 16? Yeah, that's also good, yeah. Sunspot scales anyway, but this scales a little better. This should be fine, right? This is just better than Zola because of the board spacing problems, I think. Walking down that Zola line might just be a loss if you commit to it. I think since... Oh! Oh, dang! Okay, that was not what I expected to see, but uh, all good, all good. Victory. I mean, it looks like the Zola line would have won as well, but I, I think this ends up with, with way more total power, right? Because if we go Zola left, we have no power left, and then we have, like, two Nimrods right, but who cares? And you still end up with one Nimrod mid. So this, this lets you contest basically left, whereas the Zola plan does not let you contest left, so. Man, if they flipped these, uh, were we revealing first? Surely we were, right? Yeah, we were. They could have won if they flipped these. Okay. Sanctorum is actually fine for us. We have ways to get over there, of course. Oh my god. So we really just want Shuri, Nimrod, and an Eat, and we win, right? That's fine. So I don't... Well, you know, we could just put Sunspot to the right as well and just say screw any, like, Shuri or whatever. Just Sunspot into Zola, but that would... Well, no, that would actually be fine for a Nimrod as well, wouldn't it? Because you can still Nimrod on top of the Sunspot. And then if you hit an Eat, like if you hit a, you know, we've got Carnage or whatever, we can still Nimrod the, the Carnage and, and play the Nimrods over. And then if you've got an Arnim Zola, whether it hits the Sunspot or the other one, it would still be fine. So I think it's okay to play this is my, my takeaway here. Psylocke could mess things up a little bit. Mirror Island, okay, nice. Oh, there's the Nimrod too. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> do we ever, do we ever play the Storm? No, right, we don't. Not with a Nimrod in in action. Um, yeah, so we just play Shuri Nimrod, right? It's the same. It's the same story. We we're just happy to Shuri on four, Nimrod on five, and then whatever Deathlock or whatever on six. Carnage, I guess, bigger, but you know, whatever. Should be okay.
As long as they don't disrupt this somehow. Nova Psylocke has definitely got me thinking about Galactus. Um, they they snapped, so I'm thinking maybe they have a Galactus. Are they planning to win via Galactus? Because Nimrod can, can beat that on like Luke's bar or whatever. Oh, they also have the Nimrod. Uh, theirs is big, but it's not Shuri big yet. I think they're going to Galactus here, but we're revealing first, so we'll still get the Nimrods. Uh, Galactus here means we're each only going to have the one Nimrod, though. So I might have to win on power on the final turn. Which is not easy. I'll have an advantage thanks to the Nimrod, but only a small one. Oh, but that's fine. We can't play the Luke's Bar anyways. No, I will win. That's totally okay. N none of us can add power here anyway. Oh, not, not what I thought. That's just Deathlock. Okay. Wolverine's not big enough to beat this then, right? Because mine's 10 in both spots, and that's... Well, oh, actually, it's going to be 11 to 12 there, but again, that doesn't matter, because I'm still really big here as well, right? Um... Do I ever do this? I know that I'm winning Nimrod and I'm pretty dang sure I'm winning Venom too, right? So there's no reason to do that, right? Could also storm this, but again, that just adds risk, right? Yeah, I know it gives me two, I guess this actually is technically, I lose mid, but I know I win right because I go to 22 and then I know I win, I know I win Murali because I'm getting another Nimrod back. I think this is actually more likely to win, isn't it? Because it's a guaranteed, guaranteed win left. Oh, I don't know the math. I don't know the math. I don't know the math. <laughs> I don't know the math. I, I don't know the math. I don't know the math. I think we're fine, though. We should be totally fine, right? We're going to win left and right, I think. Oh, no, we're not. We're one off. No way. No. No. Or way more off with Muir Island. No. The original line would have won. I mean, that's, that's really hard to know, right? If the Wolverine rolled either other spot, we win. Outsmarted ourselves? Not really. I, see, that's really hindsighty. That's not necessarily true, right? Because look, if Wolverine goes to either other spot, suddenly this play looks really smart, right? If I'm looking, I think this is the right line using hindsight. Again, without hindsight, who knows? But they actually win two out of three times. Uh, they lose two out of three times with this line because Wolverine in either spot here loses in the game. In this line, if I take the other line, Wolverine wins in either spot because I'd only have 11 and 11.